so my dad was, dad was like, you should go ahead and try as well. So the first time I ever sat in a go-kart, I went and hit the tire wall. And I was like, uh-oh, no, not meant for me. Uh, but you know, again, I was not happy with my brothers having fun and I was supposed to sit outside. So I was like, no, I need to get over this fear and I need to get back on the track. So slowly I started learning how to drive a go-kart and got, you know, like just having fun with my brothers. And in a few months, I started beating my brothers while we were having the race. And that's when uh, my dad asked me if I wanted to take it a little bit more seriously and try my hands at professional racing. Now, I didn't know what professional racing was. I was just like, okay, I get to race with the boys, I get to travel a lot more, I get to race fast cars. So like, let's go, let's see what, ha you know, what happens. And that's when we went to see one of the races in Pune. And that's when I realized it is a male dominated sport. There were no girls, just maybe one or two girls out there racing. And I was like, I need to get into the car and race with the boys. So I got professionally trained and that's how my journey started. At the age of nine, with just a few days of training and practice, uh, obviously back then, you know, it was very unconventional for a girl to be on, you know, onto the racetrack. So a lot of people would tell my father and my parents that why are you spending so much behind a girl since it's very expensive and she's gonna get married one day and she's gonna leave and all of that and my dad was like no as long as she's ready to work hard and she is following her passion I will make sure to give everything that she needs and that my father is my inspiration because t until now he's still working hard to make sure that you know he's financially backing me up he's always making sure I need whatever I need to get back onto the racetrack and to all the students, you know, you need to have that passion in you, be it for the cars or whatever you like, just work hard for what you want and I think, you know, everything else will just come on its own but never give up on your dreams, that's what I do, thank you. That's lovely. <laughs> so you said you, you started off when you were nine years old, I have a daughter who's nine. However, she reaches your age, she has such wonderful, eloquent things to say about being oh, your dad. She will, she will for sure. Your dad, dad must be a very proud man. But you know, you, she made a very important point there. And I think Dr. Pandit, who is the principal of KJ Stromai College of Medicine, would agree that the best man for the job is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, fantastic. Uh, Mr. Varma, Godrej and Boyce has mentored the students. I, I love that. You know, it's not a one-off contribution. There's exchange of ideas, there's exchange of technology, Godrej Aerospace, Godrej Tooling, uh, are businesses that are attracting very closely with the students. How important are such collaborations with our next generation of engineers? I mean, it's not just about the current generation, is it? It's about building a whole assembly line of the next gen. No, I think it's, uh, it's extremely important. I see the very high level, if I may say so, it helps uh, in uh, making manufacturing as an attractive sector for, for talent to move into. I mean, very broadly, uh, and I hate to say this, but uh, the, the manufacturing component of our GDP has stagnated at about 15 to 16 percent, and the government speaks about 25 percent. That's a target. Manufacturing has its own challenges, and uh, I think today students are spoiled for choices. You, you know, IT, digital, that takes uh, preference. I think manufacturing also has, uh, has its own attractors. And I think uh, by giving, by working with students and by giving them an opportunity to move from textbooks to application of whatever they have studied and giving it shape, I think it drives a lot of passion. Uh, we recruit, and I must share about 500 engineers every year, Goldridge and Morris. Uh, we need students who, who, who are good in theory but also good with their hands. We need students who love the subjects. And I think this kind of a, a, a relationship I think fosters love for the subject, fosters love for engineering. And I think in, in many ways it's, it's good for the industry, it's good for the 
for the country. So we have continued to work, work with the students and we continue to work with students wherever we have this opportunity to work. And I think more than important, I think Indian industry benefits and I believe, and I honestly believe India wins because of this. So we will continue working with the students and as I mentioned earlier, we gain as much if not more from the students. Young minds are, are, are wonderful. The challenge, they bring in a deep amount of purpose and commitment and that can be very inspiring and very infectious. Lovely, it's a two-way process. But you know, I, I was having this this conversation with Mr. Varma off stage and it, it's a very simple summation. It's, it's more glamorous for students to get into coding, you know, because it's the so-called cool thing to do. But he was right, he was saying that you know, manufacturing initially is a little tough. You have to get out of the shop floors and things like that. But with more and more tech coming in, I think, you know, students are also going to be stimulated to work on in manufacturing because they're going to be working with new tech. So that really is the, is the hope for the for the future. Thanks very much for that. Wonderful. Saurabh, I want to bring you in. I mean, you're, you're a trained motorsport driver, but you are now imparting knowledge to young students. The moment you flip from being a working, working professional to somebody who is passing on skills, like a teacher, I think it's so much more fulfilling. You know, and I'm sure you echo my sentiments. What has been the most rewarding part of your experience of working with your Ryan Racing team, working with these incredibly talented students? So, first of all, I must say that they are an incredibly hard-working bunch. Uh, so, in fact, Prajul hasn't slept well for the last three days. We were just talking about that yesterday. Wow. So, uh, and, and that's the culture. So, uh, and, but I personally enjoy uh, hanging around with them because I get to learn so much. So, in fact, in our racing team, so we have a racing team as well. We have a lot of uh, people with a formal student background. And uh, they're always looking to innovate and do cool stuff and experiment and make things better and better and better. And I think that's the approach uh, even Oran Racing brings into everything they do. In fact, when Oran Racing started, uh, one of my friends who's a race driver was in the first team. right? So I've followed what they've been doing right since then. And it's incredible how far they have come. So and so every year, you know, they come to our track at least for their selections or uh, so I meet the new bunch every year and I interact with them. The passion, uh, the intellect is the same, the hard work is the same. In fact, uh, even for the simulator setup, uh, the boys were there um, at our track figuring out how to put it together. And uh, yeah, it's just fun to see how they approach it. Half an hour discussion, figure it out, solution is there. In a day, the solution is presented over here. You know, it's so quick. Um, so it, it's very, like, it's a learning experience for me to be around them. And uh, whenever I'm working with somebody in our team who's not from a student background, you know, I'm like a little more relaxed because I know they're so used to figuring things out that they will find a solution and and do something. And even though I'm not from an engineering background, I've developed a passion for engineering, doing stuff like this and experiments like that because like the joy of building something with your own hands is so exciting and I can see how they're able to push themselves uh, to such extremes because that joy of building something and creating something is uh, something else. That's a super answer. Incidentally, all of you, uh, post this session, you know, after we unveil the car and we do a round of questions with the audience, I urge you to work up an appetite before lunch in the next room by going on to the simulator. The simulator is there, you can go and give it a, a bash, give it a shot. Like I said, it will be a nice thing to do uh, before lunch. Um, Mr. Prajwal who hasn't slept very much. <laughs> I want to now talk about the race car itself. Give us a few unique features. What are the improvements that you've made? Stuff that you're obviously very, very proud and you want to showcase to the audience. Okay, yeah. so we build a new race car every year. So definitely it won't be the same one. It has to be a better performing car. And it's a year-round process. And the team works in day and day out. 
So this car is significantly better than the previous one. It goes from 0 to 103.8 seconds. It features a, three, a 430 volt battery pack, a 8.2 kilowatt hour energy capacity, and a fully validated aerodynamics package that you might be uh, seeing. The vehicle, the key component is the powertrain. It consists of the battery pack, the motor, and the motor controller. And due to the pandemic, we had to cover up a lot on time as well as on knowledge, uh, which has to be transferred from previous team. And uh, it was a long process to get up with the battery pack and get it up and running. And it was a tedious task, but we got it in. Uh, ready. Great. I'd like first Mira and then sort of take this. I mean, they, these these guys are taking more than baby steps in the e-racing world. Let's say you know some of them are inspired by you and from the manufacturing side, just like you're thinking of going into the manufacturing side. Suppose they say we want to get to the racing side of things. I'd like to know about. The ecosystem for e-racing and Formula E in India and abroad, let's start obviously with India because that's our immediate uh, space. If you could tell us a little bit about the e-racing scene, Meera first you and then Sora. Well, I am not the correct person. Correct. I mean, He's the one for sure. Yeah, he wow. runs a team. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, from my point of view, I think it's the next thing for sure. I was not into esports at all, but due to the pandemic, I had to get onto the simulator and start driving because that was the only option left for us uh, to practice and to just, you know, have the hang of it. And uh, yeah, it, it's like growing. I had to learn so much. I got to learn the bits and parts of everything uh, while driving on the simulator. And it has surely helped me because as soon as I was on the racetrack after driving on the simulator for like almost two years now, I had the confidence that I just need to get the car sorted, the technical part sorted, and I have my driving skills to put on out there and get the results. So I think, you know, it really helps for the younger generation or anybody out there who wants to get into motorsports. Esport is a very easy option uh, to get into it. And then obviously, you know, then comes the real racing and, uh, you know, you can participate in national races. But I think um, it's a good opportunity for everybody to try their hands on and I think I'm sure everybody will go on the simulator and try it today and they will know what we are talking about as well. Yeah, honestly. Over to you, So we're talking about esports basically, right? Not yeah. electric basically. Yeah. Okay, that's not a good Yeah, so uh, fortunately just before the pandemic, uh, we started a company, me and another race driver started a company in esports and uh, because that is the next thing and uh, we started doing some physical events and the pandemic happened so we started doing online events and uh, in fact uh, during the pandemic we were just sitting at home and thinking what can we do and we started doing some experiments hosting races online live streaming it and i remember the first time around 3000 people watched the live stream and i was doing the live stream from my house and in the first month of the pandemic i learned how to do a live stream and host things online Right, and uh, my teammate called me and it was like 3,000 people watched. I'm like, really? People want to watch? And uh, then we moved along and we got some sponsors and I was like, really? People want to support this? Right, and then suddenly we were doing uh, large scale projects and uh, we were having thousands of people participate. And then the challenge was, wait, how do you uh, host something at such a big scale? So the interest that is there has surprised me. Out of a small playful experiment, apart from everything else we do, it's become a business. And then, you know, we put together a team and we started working on some cool projects. And uh, we have some really smart people working on it. And the whole objective right from the beginning has been that, uh, to be honest, motorsport is an expensive sport. And that kind of limits the number of people who can get involved in the sport. So right from the first competition, we've been allocating a part of the sponsorship budget to take the winner and put him or her in, into real world motorsport. So that is giving access to somebody who is passionate about the sport, who doesn't have a way to get into the sport, can compete from his or her home, show their potential and then we'll pick them up and put into real world motorsport. And fortunately, we have the real world motorsport infrastructure ourselves. So uh, yeah, and the response has been crazy. In fact, recently we did a competition, we had four and a half thousand participants. Oh, oh. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's it's getting big, and uh, yeah, hopefully you should be able to.
bring more people uh, into the sport and also we did something of an engineering competition on the e-sport side uh, which was called Revit with Formula Bharat where around 34 colleges participated, Formula Student Colleges and the concept was it was not just e-sports, it was engineering plus e-sports so they could tinker around with the car, the setup and things like that. So even from an engineering perspective, there is so much to learn in the e-sports space because you can model the car, play around with it, test out your theories, your concepts and see how things work and then go and do something in the real world after having some test, uh, having done some testing in the online space. So I think a lot of exciting stuff to come. We are working on some really crazy stuff. Hopefully in the next six months we'll be doing some more stuff. More power to you. So keep a keen eye on Saurabh Bangabhadya and uh, all their activities. Mr. Verma, we, we talked about Gotrich and Boys partnering with the KJ Somaya College of Engineering. I mean, that's something that's been happening from 2017 right up to now. And as you said, it's going to continue. But this is a larger question because we know that you're also partnering, partnering with other institutes. Corporates engaging with students not just for, you know, building this car. What is your vision as Godrej and Boys in terms of, of giving them the impetus to become pioneers in their respective fields? I'd like to talk about that. So we, we work with very many engineering schools uh, in the country and uh, if I were to speak in terms of the, the relationship, at least uh, what we offer, it varies. It could be internships, it could be study tours, it could be assignments. And we also engage with the faculty wherever we, we acquire technical inputs. You know, what, the way I see it is, you know, again at a very, very high, high level, these are very productive uh, relationships. See, what we are able to offer, I, I just want to go back and, to my time as an engineering student. So we, we had textbooks, yeah. We had workshops, yes. But okay, applying, applying our, our, our knowledge was limited to very few projects, that was one. But every time we went to an industry, what we felt at least that time, I know it's true now, is the world, world had moved on a little bit. So, you know, so hopefully we as Golden Boys can, can offer people uh, something which is not in the syllabus but is much more relevant and, and true at the moment. What's, what's, what's really happening in the engineering world, in the manufacturing world. Uh, the third is uh, what we are able to offer, I guess, an industry we are able to offer is, you know, in the workshop, the machines we have, we are outdated. Whereas, if you come to an industry, because finally, there is also the focus on the bottom line, you will see the well as well in terms of robotics, in terms of 3D printing, you know, that's what we are able to offer. What I, what I feel is, uh, every time we engage with the students, you know, we are, we are actually doing service to ourselves, to the industry, because to the sector, because at the end of the day, hopefully we are giving experiences, we are expanding minds, and we are able to recruit people who who, who are having up to date knowledge and who can be productive from day one. So at the high, at the, you know, at the high level, what's our vision? We want to in this country to have students who are up to date in their knowledge of what's happening in industries, much much beyond the textbooks. The vision is that uh, this country has engineers who are productive from day one, and the vision is this country should have engineers who can dream big. The vision is we want to have engineers who have got very good domain, domain knowledge, but who, are, who can also work in teams and who are also very competitive, because business in business there is a competitive streak whether we like it or not. So the, 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 the bigger picture is in terms of having a whole bunch of people who are good, competent, up to date, can work in teams, are passionate about the subject, and who will who will really help uh, help uh, you know 
in terms of making this dream of uh, being in a college, college uh, uh, partner group. But I, I think, to me, in simple words, can we really be factory to the world? And if we, if we can plant some of those seeds now, I honestly believe India can be the factory to the world. We have a huge domestic market, but that's fine. What's the global footprint? And if we have a whole bunch of students who are uh, passionate and good with their hands, we can be the factory to the world. That's, that's the vision. And hopefully we are in a small way helping with that. Lovely. More than a small way. Thank you very much for that. So, young man, I believe there is one innovation that might be competition to a big global automaker. So come on, reveal that to us today. <laughs> okay, yeah, so this has been in the works since the pandemic and it was a work from home. So it was a lot into research and then we got the facilities at the college where we could have tested it out. And uh, so we, I'll, show it, I'll show it along with the video. And this is something that the team has worked a lot for. We are taking guidance from all the college faculties and various people on how to get it done. And it's still in works, but we hope to get it on track by 2024. So it's basically a driverless vehicle that you've seen. Uh, can you have the video, please? So what you see on the screen right now is a driver's prototype running. Uh, it's being controlled by a PC and uh, the actuations are going on. Uh, the screen on the laptop will show you how the track is going uh, through the car and the motor is running in the background. It is uh, adjusting various profiles. Uh, we have a LiDAR in place which will be detecting the phones in actual. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. We had a touch on track too and we hope to get it on uh, roads by 2024. Watch out Tesla, <laughs> driverless cars from Orion Racing and the students of KJS of our College of Engineering. Well, I think we're at the home stretch before we unveil the car which we're all really waiting for. But, you know, since we have a large share of students and parents of students here, I'd like Meera and Saurabh both to take this one. Just basically advice to the students they're going to Germany, they're going to Austria, they're going to be representing the nation. They all have dreams and aspirations. And from your vast experience, I'm sure you'd like to say something to them. Meera. As I said before, never give up. Uh, well, to everybody, all the students out there, I'm sure you guys will do well in all the competitions. Uh, I have been following you guys and yeah, you guys have been doing amazing all throughout the years. So good luck to you guys. And just one thing that I always say is that whatever, you know, you can live a normal life, but always have that one thing that you were really passionate about. Racing is that for me. I have a normal life. I have to, you know, go out there, work on the track. I have my own tracks. I have to work there. I go train my students. I have my own team as well, just like Saurabh has. But in the end, racing is my passion. So when I'm on the racetrack, that's when I feel at home and that's when I'm the most comfortable in. But at the same time, I have to always push myself out of my comfort zone to grow as a person. And I think that's the most important thing. Have that one thing that makes you go out of your comfort zone every time and just enjoy life and just never give up. Yeah, thank you. Great words. Get out of your comfort zone. Shake yourself up now then. Sorry. I think I'll be very honest, uh, having interacted with these kids, I don't really think any, I need to give them any advice or <laughs> share anything. They are doing an incredible job, they are incredibly motivated, passionate. In fact, I learn from them. So I, I don't really have anything to say to them except for one thing that I've been personally trying to do over the last few years is from time to time I just like look back six months, review the human being that I was six months back and try to see if I've developed. I keep trying to read so that I keep evolving so that my results are better. Um, I think that I can say with out of experience uh, in life. Uh, but other than that, I think they've got everything uh, sorted and I'm really excited to see how this goes for them. So good luck. Awesome. We wish you luck in Germany, Austria and everything that you do. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to unveil the car and then you can take a look at the car.